Welcome back, YouTube. It is long, long, long overdue, and I'm excited to say, back on YouTube. Looking around, you probably see I'm in a brand new space. So this is the soon to be completed Gambaru HQ, which I cannot wait to be able to show you guys everything that's gonna be going on in this space. And this is um, the first official workout that I'm doing here in my new home. As you can see, we're still putting a lot of things together. Still have the guys from Atlantis putting in all the weight stacks for all the different machines as well, the, the pin-loaded machines. Um, but today is deadlift posterior chain day. And this is the first time that I've been using, I've touched these barbells, I've touched these weights in about five years. Because I used to have this same kit set up in my, in my garage years ago. And my goal was way back then, five years ago, say I want to be able to create a space where I can train, where I can create content for you guys. And it literally took five years of developing social media, of interacting, creating content, and traveling the world to be able to get to a position now where I can say to you guys, welcome to my home. So it's a little bit sentimental for me to be able to say, to be able to look back and just see how far um, everything has grown over the past few years from training in my garage, training in a personal training context in a commercial gym, to now being able to present everything that I do to you guys, wherever you are in the world, all here through YouTube, through the app, through the website. If you haven't checked that out, you probably should at some point in time. Cheap plug right there. Um, but for now, let's get into some deadlifting. I've just spent the last maybe five, 10 minutes warming up. Still got one more warm set to go, I think, and then we're gonna start getting through the rest of the session. Let's go. Exercise one, uh, block pulls, did three sets of five. Now, if you've been following a little bit of what I do with block pulls or rack pulls, normally I do it from knee height, but the blocks I've got made, the way they're set up here, it's just below my knee. So today is my first time using it at this depth in about four months, and I'm being a little bit more cautious with my loading, just to make sure that when you explore these new ranges of motion that you're unfamiliar with, you don't overshoot. So I did this weight last week at knee height, which has shorter range of motion, which I honestly prefer a little bit more. But again, work with what you've got available to you and nothing wrong with going below the knee. Big question I get is why do I do a rack pull or a block pull with limited range of motion? From a muscle building standpoint, you're not actually gonna get a humongous muscle building stimulus from rack pulls because of the short range of motion and also because of how as you reach that lockout position, um, you've got very, very, very good leverages to be able to shift that weight. So there isn't much of a challenge through a very large range of motion for the hip extensors, but there is gonna be some. The real reason why I do it is purely as a strength power builder. It's probably the only exercise that I really do in my entire training week that's purely focused on strength and less about stimulating muscle mass for hypertrophy or for growth, which I think is a very, very important part to keep programmed into your training from time to time. 
The reason why I do the restricted range and not a full deadlift is because by going the shorter range, I still get sufficient stimulation through my hip extensors, my glutes and my hamstrings, without overtaxing my erectors. Because through the rest of the workout and through the rest of the week, I'm doing a lot of axial or spinal loading work, and I want to do whatever I can to preserve my low back and my spine for the future workouts. I also do a lot of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and part of me trying to preserve my fatigue for that is also going a limited range of motion here. Because again, range of motion is limited, um, not to let me lift heavier weights, but more so to get the stimulation I want without fatiguing other things like my lower back too much. Because I do find when I go a floor deadlift, I get a similar response out of my glutes and my hamstrings, but I also start to fatigue a lot sooner in terms of the weeks doing this program through my lower back. And that's where injuries start to creep in. Exercise number two, we are doing T-bar row, so a chest supported T-bar row. When it comes to choosing row movements, I prefer to do something supported, like a chest supported row. Um, typically, I go for a T-bar or a machine option. I just don't have any of the other machines I'd like to use at the gym just yet. Reason being, you don't have to worry about balancing, bracing, or supporting yourself because the machine does it for you. If you're doing, say, a barbell row, you're always going to find that your low back or your hips start to fatigue first, well before your lats or your upper back muscles have really fatigued, especially if you're doing them second after doing something like a deadlift or a snatch grip rack pull. So, other thing I like about the T-bar row variation as opposed to a typical bent over row or a seal row or any other kind of dumbbell row is how the resistance or the weight changes through the range of motion. So when you pull up, you'll see that the weight draws in closer on the horizontal axis. So weight starts here, as I row up, the weight pulls in that away, which creates a bit of a drop off in the overall load makes it a little bit easier to reach that peak contraction. Typical barbell row, typical dumbbell row, you don't have that exact same drop off and that ends up overloading the peak contraction, which, you know, it might be a good thing for your goals, it might not be. For my current program, my current goals, it's not a good thing. Exercise numero tres. I think that's Spanish. I'm trying to learn Spanish. Numero? Numero. I don't know. Numero. I think that's more correct. Numero. Tres. Um, a lat pull down. So, see, we got carabiners on carabiners. We've got handles on handles. We're being super duper fancy just for you guys on YouTube. But in all seriousness, this slight change in positioning, this slight change in setup makes a world of difference in the contractile ability and the overall alignment for your lats. When you're doing a typical lat pull down sitting in the bench, because of where the cable tends to be set up, it tends to be really good for your upper back, for your mid back, for your rotator cuff, but not so much for the lats. So by changing positioning here a little bit, opting for a slightly wider grip but not too wide, um, this is almost perfect alignment for the lats to be pulling on. What would make this a little bit better is if I had a slightly wider setup, but I'm still waiting to get the, um, the handle attachments that I want to be able to create the exact positioning that I need um, for lats. But for now, it does the job. About six months ago, I was in Portugal 
on tour and I came across this Nautilus piece. So this is a first generation old school Nautilus piece from around I think maybe the 70s. Um, I tried it out and then it was absolutely incredible. It's very different to your typical machine rear delt flies. It's all to do with the actual setup of the machine, the way that these the, the pulley system works inside the, the machine. It's just perfect. They really got a lot of machines right well back in the 70s and 80s, and they started screwing them up a lot when they started to develop them even more, and you lost a lot of these ideal mechanics. Anyway, um, I'm really excited to be able to have this piece in my home, in my gym, um, to be able to use. So you probably won't have this exact machine available to you, but if you ever come across it, use it. I really like that you get to use your elbows or your upper arm as the anchor point instead of using your hands. Just you're not worrying about gripping so tightly and it just for me tends to hit the rear delts a little bit better and I can play a lot more with the positioning of my arm. What you'll see, I'm not exactly in an overhand grip, I'm not in an underhand grip either, I'm just slightly in between in a position that's hard to replicate on your typical um, machine rear delt flies that you would see in most commercial gyms these days. So, so they're the big reasons to why I picked out this piece for my gym. Biceps time, doing a standing, converging, slight converging hammer grip curl. Um, the reason for the setup of this is just looking at what the most comfortable position is for your elbows to track on. So if you just stand with your arms by your side, if you bend your elbow, chances are the elbow won't, the arm won't travel straight up in front of you like you're on train tracks. Instead, you're gonna find that for most people, the arm tracks inward slightly, just like this across the body. So for me, it's all just about find the right cable angle that allows me to curl on that exact angle. Final exercise for this posterior chain day is glute ham raises. Just doing some pauses here in the stretch position. This is one of my bread and butter movements for building up a lot of eccentric strength or that lowering strength in the glutes and hamstrings. Very, very important from a rehabilitatory or a prehabilitatory uh, standpoint to help bulletproof the posterior chain. Alright guys, before we finish up for today's posterior chain session, I want to ask you guys, what do you want to see more of on this channel? Do you want to see more videos like this, training alongside me, going through my training sessions? Do you want to see more educational stuff, maybe breaking down different exercises? Or do you want to see more of those day in the life, lifestyle type videos? Leave a comment below and let me know what you want to see. Don't forget to like this video, give it a good thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as well. And I'll see you guys next time.